Hello, I'm my friends. I'm Rick, and this is your seat at the table. Welcome to the channel. Got a little Missy sitting over here behaving herself. Uh, early, early last week, or maybe it was the, the, over the weekend, somebody mentioned this uh, to me, and I thought, geez, I would like to see this. And I couldn't, the, uh, the only download that's available is it is free, but it, the site. Uh, I went to that was on it kept asking me for a monthly prescri uh, subscription or, or yearly subscription and apparently I didn't figure it out how you could still download from free because every time I tried to download it it kept asking me to, uh, to, to you know take up a, a subscription to the damn site which I just can't once again I, I, I y'all get tired of hearing the broken record and I know y'all got your own issues and stuff and uh, I, I just can't afford to pay for yet another thing I just can't not do that so somebody else was able to tune me into an actual pdf they they sent it to they emailed it to me for them I, i'm truly grateful for that uh i was really interested in it. a i like fan based products i like well-made fan based products uh, because it takes us into the what if or it it it's, it fills niches that the game companies are incapable or unwilling to tackle and uh that's that's fine so what i love about this sort of stuff is this is a continuation of the what happened story. So if you're familiar with Battletech and you're familiar with the society, this was a uh, secret organization or semi-secret organization uh, among a uh, clan scientist case. And uh, they they were, if you go by the some of the original uh, how uh, catalyst based material or uh, was it fan pro fan pro based material the society branched out into some pretty serious and deep uh, uh, scientific research that led to some things like gene case which of course they still deny exists and uh, a bunch of other things uh, but including uh, manipulating the blood gene pool of the mech warrior uh, case within the clans and of course this got them mostly eradicated uh, when it became uh, no, the mech, the mech warrior class, the the warrior case did not hold to anybody else trying to get one over them, on them, including their own people. So, like in the case of uh, Clan Coyote, who damn near lost their entire scientist case, uh, there was some big cleaning house amongst them, quite a few of the clans. Uh, so what we had was pretty elaborate stuff that was. Yet another thing that was going on uh, at the end of the uh, uh, FedCom Civil War, leading up into the Jihad, excuse me, the Blakus slash uh, Dark Ages, and the wars of Reaving back in the core or in the Clan wor worlds, and so it was implied in uh, one of the novels or toward the end of one of the Falcon Falcon novels that uh, most of these uh, these the society members were hunted down and eradicated by the, the Warrior case, and. Uh, the fact that I always thought, well, that's considering just how secretive of the, the, the society was at the beginning, at, throughout most of its uh, uh, existence, official existence, to openly to to openly declare war against the warrior case when you're utterly unprepared for the sheer numbers that they could bring against you is kind of like a, a bit more than a bit of hubris. It's also uh, uh, just goes to show you even the clan scientist case was not smart enough to as smart as they thought they were because they couldn't take the lessons that the, the invading uh, crusader or the invading clans learned by ta taking on uh, the uh, inner sphere that when you go after something that's much more powerful than you, you're really risk Asking a, a lot more than you think you are and you're putting yourself in very bad situation which is like goes in the face of 101 command tactics for any any in any military that I would understand anyway so uh, the idea that the the society was able to ex extradite portions of itself and are still existing in the modern Battletech universe is a great and awesome thing because it gives you yet another faction behind a faction kind of stuff that wheel within wheel within wheels we see the same kind of stuff when uh, we talk about uh, the not named clan or clan wolverine where it's suggested and hinted and implied that at least a small percentage of them managed to escape and it's one of those great mysteries. I did a video on it, and uh, I think that uh, the society is kind of been that same thing. Where we get into some more interesting stuff about how the uh, fans have taken it, this particular person. Uh, let's see. Let's take a look into it just a hair. So we got the table of contents and writing by my, uh, main gunnery and proofreading. You know. PDF creation formatting by uh, main gunner's taking most of it. 
illustrations by Matt Plog, color brand and handle, uh, cover uh, and inner uh, cover and inner cover mixed by Anthony Scroggins, by a uh, bio tank from Interstellar Front uh, Players Two, Weapon Test Wars of Reaving and Society Dagger Star by Day. So he borrowed. They borrowed. Uh, it's not plagiarizing if it's a fan based thing. So they borrowed the stuff. So this is say that this is actually created by uh, Mr. Scroggins, who is very well known in the in the Catalyst and BattleTech uh, Society today. Uh, so anyway. Then we got, uh, I'd also like to give special thanks to Marauder6848 uh, for motivating, motivating me to make a real start on this project. Special thanks also for Dustin Bach for giving me permission to use the Koran uh, art. I have also received valuable tips from Dragon Cat for developing the AU. These tips have been uh, greatly increased the, qual uh, the quality. So disclaimer, this is a fan made book and has no association or approval applied or otherwise from Tops, Catalyst Game Labs, In Media Res, Piranha Games, or Hairbrain Schemes LLC. No part of this work may be altered for sold for profit, nor otherwise circulated in any form other than in which it is published. And then it goes on to how to use this book. So remember, not that long ago, if you haven't viewed the video, you should go do it, or take the opportunity to go do it. I did one on a, a fan, fan product based on Clan Burrock and what they thought might be going on with Clan Burrock after the fact. And there's some there's some interesting segues in the Clan Burrock uh a uh, book that briefly mentions the society or the, some certain elements of society. Just like in here, there's some interesting segues that lead to the Clan Burrock. And I, and I've, I speculated that maybe the people that created these two source books uh, somehow either are consciously connected and don't realize it, or they do realize it, because it's almost like a what-if series. You know, there's the there's some continuations. It's just like um, so to suggest that everything is utterly wiped out is disingenuous or stupid, because you know are they rendered uh, you know ineffectual? That that happens all the time. So it's like uh, the uh, word of Blake uh, after the utter chaos and destruction of the quote Blakeist era. Uh, the Wabis basically ceased to exist. It was implied that Comstar and, and various elements in the houses hunted them down to the last man. And to say that in a, in a place the size of a, a, a large portion of a, of a galaxy is crazy. The odds that you got all the Wabis is uh, 100%. I call bullshit when I see it. I don't think so. Uh, well, now I understand that Catalyst has a particular mindset and view as to why they don't want to pursue it anymore, and that's fine. They, it was an era, an epic era, and it came to a conclusion. Uh, it was also in an era prior to Catalyst taking control, so they were left with a hot mess, and they've done their level. They've done a real good job of trying to stitch all the mess, to clean the mess up, and stitch the corpse back together and bring it to bring it back to life. As we see now, BattleTech is thriving and and growing and. Uh, it's awesome, right? So uh, the idea that uh, the Wabi's up and just completely dis uh, disappeared, I, I don't buy into that. I believe that there are elements of it or factions within the factions, because that's one of the things that you know we have to take into account that the, the Word of Blake itself was a splinter faction uh, from Comstar. So within Word of Blake, there are many other factions. That's well established, and they didn't always get along. Uh, they didn't always work uh, well in the harness and that caused some problems so to suggest that a hundred percent of them are completely destroyed and wiped out it's no I don't buy it I believe that there's still elements of it out there or sections of some factions that survive and are either plotting or scheming or biding their time it's hard to say it's just like uh, the the work here that me and Gunnery did uh, on this when he talks about coming into uh, the, how they got out how they survived uh, the hidden hope yards Genetics focus. I mean, the, they talk about further research in certain areas that they were being uh, curtailed or at flat out uh, uh, stonewalled by the war, uh, the warrior case because they didn't care about it. Uh, just think of all the technological advances that the clans could have had at their fingertips had they given their scientist class more opportunities to openly pursue non warrior based or non-combat based uh, uh, tech tech trees i'm just saying what what was lost and what could have been and then we that brings us to that what did they do on the side in the secret because as we know the clans uh, or the clans uh, uh scientists case 
was considered the number two in line of progression. Uh, they had access to a lot of resources and material. More importantly, they were quite smart in, in, in the overall. They, they knew how to keep these activities quiet from the people who would eradicate them when it, if and when it came out, which eventually it did, right? That's the problem with trying to have a secret. Eventually, it's going to come out. The question is, can you control the, the, effect, the after effects and when it happens, or, do, you, or, can you, or should, do, do you or can you or should you get ahead of it? And and, you know release information on your terms uh, we see some of that going you know, in, the, in the UFO stuff going on today uh, I kind of see hints of that where the government has knows a lot more than they, they wanted they've ever wanted to admit to and part of the problem of admitting to it now is to, to acknowledge and and to uh, acknowledge publicly that they have been lying to the American people and the people of uh, planet Earth for decades uh, but they are governments of course they're lying they're always lying about something or misdirecting or miss miss you're, you're being misinformed because we wouldn't do such a thing but we know people who would and we pay them to you know i'm just saying but they ain't going to say that so we talk about uh their history uh, a couple planets that they they set up uh, the way that they they manufactured their equipment and their industrial base and going on and going on. So, I mean, you know, I really recommend getting this if you can. Uh, I will put a link to that website where you, that you supposedly can get it downloaded for free. Uh, hope, uh, somebody else told me that they were able to get their copy for free, which is puzzling the hell out of me as to why they, it kept insisting that I had to pay. So, unless, of course, you're allowed to get a free download, and I may have done that at some point, and now here they want me to pay more. Or I'm just not t tracking the right thing because it seems like there's a lot of material on that website that might be interesting to look at. So we got the wreck recovery, Project Rome, evacuations, you know, uh, reformation. See, the society in the inner sphere is wider and more fragmented than those in the home worlds which made it impossible for the local radicals such as scientist Etienne to initiate true large-scale rebellion among the local clans. And we've got interventions. Ah, this is where we uh, get into some stuff. I really... Uh, main gunnery man, I, I know what you're a fan of. This is one of the things that I'm, I, I'm kind of upset I don't have my exploit running uh, satisfactory. I could do the video on the other computer, but then the sound would be totally crap, and, and that's part that's a big problem. And I don't know why that is, because the sound works fine when I listen to stuff on that laptop, but something with the recording end up stuff, or the software, or the microphone, you know, I don't know, maybe... Maybe it's full of cat hair or something. And if I can figure out where it is, maybe I can clean it out. I don't know. But uh, the the uh, inability to put images in here really kind of cheeses me. I got spoiled. It used to being able to do it. Because I would dearly love to put the, uh, the old 80s cartoon opening for Mask. If you don't know what Mask is, you really need to Google it. Uh, Mask versus Venom. So obviously Main Gunnery was a fan of Mask. And... He's incorporated that into one of the elements of the uh, society. So, we talk about here. The decision was made to create a team of test pilots to perform joint exercise, evaluate new technologies, and to perform special intervention missions. This team, uh, this team was named MASC, M-A-S-C, which is an abbreviation of Mobile Armored Stealth Commandos. In the early days, they mostly used customized vehicles, either in, equipped with some sort of stealth technology, or were able to, or were able to conceal these vehicles as civilian models. Right. So, if the the '80s cartoon series, which I I watched, but there was only like one or two seasons. It didn't last very long. And everybody there had uh, their they had ve uh, civilian vehicles that could uh, that could. Uh, you know, transform into combat related vehicles. And uh, so this is basically the various concept of what they, they're suggesting here. And, and, and this sort of stuff is right up my alley. I can absolutely see, uh, you know, special forces and, and especially uh, the uh, various houses and other factions uh, idea of the CIA having these or, you know, having these outfits that uh, have quite a lot of firepower, but they're disguised as something else. Well, that's just a, that's just a cargo van over there until the cargo van, uh, you know, turns out it's heavily armored and is packing enough firepower in it to, you know, take down an assault mech. Uh, that's, uh, that's the kind of thing we're talking about here. So kudos, main gunnery, kudos for including that and working that into the story because it pops up a couple different times. And, and immediately, as soon as I saw it, that's, that's why I wrote uh, a notation over here to remind myself to talk about it. It is you gotta love that sort of thing, right? 
because I've kind of always had a, a, a soft spot uh, in my gaming uh, fashion for like James Bond, uh, spy kind of stuff. You know, I incorporated a lot of that in my own would-be game. And at one time I had most of the top secret game, which was uh, a basically that's what it was. Was uh, you were playing a version of James Bond, and uh, I I gave that entire collection and the entire game that everything I had with it as well as uh, my red box uh, material and my black, uh, blue box my uh, basic and expert uh, uh, d and stuff to my oldest son when he was 10 or 11 and uh, best I know is somebody told me some years later well he just up sold it he sold it to somebody else that he knew so he never played it and if I had known he was going to do that it could have should have would it you know anyway so this carries on after uh, the the, the uh, events that see the society basically driven out of the clan homeworld, or out of the clans in particular, and then it comes as they, like a lot of the other uh, home clans that relocated to the inner sphere, uh, elements of society had came with them and then stayed and started establishing themselves, and they kept a, they kept quiet about it. So there was a good reason why uh, um, they weren't able to be white. You know, the clans were not able to completely eradicate the society. It's the same my argument that I believe that the word of Blake is no there's no real reason for it to be 100% wiped out. Will it come back and reconstitute itself as the word of Blake in the way it was before? Uh, no, not likely. But that doesn't mean that elements within it and various smaller factions don't continue to exist and have their agendas. Now there's still enough unspoken things that go on in the inner sphere to leave you go, mm, I wonder what, you know, or mm, I wonder who. So you know that kind of stuff we talk about what came forward what was the before and how they were handling things now and interestingly enough uh they are backing clan wolf and uh clan wolf for the ill clan so at this point this was created uh the ill clan had uh, clan wolf had not taken uh terror yet and there's a sim <coughs> an, a, a, a implication here that the society elements in the society were, were acting as uh, kind of like kingmakers. Uh, if some if if there was going to be a clan uh, taking Earth, they would prefer it to be Clan Wolf versus Clan Jade Falcon for a lot of reasons. And they actually step stipulate that in here. They, they actually talk about why that is. And I think, well, yeah, I can see that. I can fully understand that. So uh, then then uh, the idea that. Uh, uh, they are working behind the scenes even today uh, for their own agendas, but in supporting for the moment Clan Wolves and the Ill Clan because they, and they cover that even in here, uh, you know, whoever becomes Ill Clan, you know, uh, uh, whoever sits on the sits on the top of the uh, the top of the mountain rests uneasily because there's lots and lots of people looking to topple you off that seat. And same thing goes for Alec Ward. Alec Ward will not be uh, the ill clan for his entire, you know, forever. He will die young or middle-aged. He will not die an old man in a bed. So, and that also goes against most of the clan ways. So if he doesn't die of old age, he'll step down because he'll have to, to pass the baton on to who? That's the question is, you know, is he going to, are they, you know, are they decanting a special generation of Alec Ward? So we have the Alec Lord, Ward uh, uh, bloodline continue and then they just get, begin, you know, they're just given the seat. Well, that goes in the, the flies in the face of how the, the, the uh, clans operate. So now once the ill clan is determined, then the ill clan is the ill clan forever. That was Kerensky's orders or his vision, regardless of what the other clans feel, want or say about the matter. That's just the facts. Uh, but who retains the leadership of the ill clan within clan ward that's well it's like any other political body within the clans it's going to be a, a hot mess and a lot of bloodshed uh, to, to determine who gets to replace Allard and it may become a point where Allard is replaced period he may not step down but is, is taken down from within so the fact that uh, that the society is implying that they are uh, supporting uh, the ill clan or the dried clan wolf strife for the ill clan status and that it, but it, that, that it's conditional and uh, on their terms leaves a lot of open windows and possibilities so it's like one of the things in the clan uh, or a clan wolf uh, uh, plot armor that I I haven't found a solid uh, uh, conclusion or a solid statement stating this is how clan wolf brought down the barrier that was you know separating the earth and the core worlds of uh the the republic from the rest of the sphere 
How did they bring that down and allow the FDL travel, the jump ships, to jump into the Terra system? And if there was ever a, a super intelligent think tank full of uh, brainiacs, uh, the society would be one of the very few. And do, were they working on Because there's a couple things in here. There's at least one entry in here that made me wonder if they weren't working on trying to figure out why uh, the... Uh, uh, gray Monday happened and how to reverse it uh, obviously there's there's some implications that the, the diamond sharks or excuse me uh, clan sea box excuse me has uh, figured out a way to reverse the problem or to circumvent the problem altogether with a replacement so we get basic information operations of how the government works uh, historical overview so society's government uh, the council council peers the board branches projects and mount uh, and boondoggles then we get into the, the two main worlds uh, uh, Splitsbergen and Nutanus so one of these is in the periphery and uh, for all intents and purposes, uh, the population is uh, encouraged to, to remain in, or to act independent and uh, even has their own uh, their own planetary militia for defense, which is basically designed to tie uh, tie down an, an attacker long enough for the society's military arm to gear, uh, to ramp up and swing in behind them and close the door. And then the other world is uh, within the era of the old or the Republic era. And yet it is a system that for one reason or another either dropped off of the majority of houses uh, radars, uh, star charts, or uh, it, it was deemed uh, unsuitable for any kind of exploitation that was cost effective and left alone. So this gives the society two solid, quote, secret bases of operation, which if you're going to be this kind of entity that generates a lot of potential enemies, having fallback is necessary. And important so having more than one world ideally they would have more they would have even you know two or three more that's only known to a very select uh, handful of people because it's hard to keep secrets and the more people that know a secret the less the more likely somebody's gonna spill a bean at least that's my experience anyway I've been uh, I, I picked up this uh, zero sugar mug no caffeine. That's the stuff I'm missing. I, I need my caffeine. Uh, bought a box of stuff that's on sale at the store. And it's like the Pepsi Zero. Tastes okay as long as it's really, really cold. Starting to, This is now becoming room temperature. It actually was slushy when I brought it in here. And it's kind of going, makes me take a drink and go bleh. You know, because you know, I, I don't know. I'm just kind of weird that way. So we get new purpose, talking about force organizations, their mass units, agents, frontline units, dual ranks, unit organization, military exceptions, transport, late, late changes, state of readiness, industry and economy, scientific project, uh, projects, support. Then we get into some basic uh, um, unit formation sheets. So you have these, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, uh, four separate major uh, entities to help defend their motions and movements. Then we have a, a rules to annex. This is a role playing page, I suppose, for uh, the role playing, uh, MechWare, the role playing game for uh, templates for creating society members. Then we have new equipment, capital modules. So they were developing a technology to produce basically plug and play, uh, uh, omni, -mech, omni starships, if you will, that gives them the opportunity to rechange and manipulate the core ship to become whatever it is the society needs and it's pretty clever I think this is quite clever and uh, right on board with it right on so I mean I'd like to see a bit more in uh, scientific development and possible you know what ifs going down the road but all intents purposes we're talking about 28 pages 27 pages uh, this is a very nice addition to anybody's Battletech uh, shelf. I'm just saying, if you get that download, you get that PDF, by all means, uh, do so. Uh, uh, once again, I, I'm quite happy to send uh, anybody who requests a copy of this to them via email. And my email is in the YouTube uh, the YouTube bio somewhere. It's uh, RW Hilliard author at Gmail. Uh, and if so, you know, I would send you a copy of this because... So it was given to me and I'm not selling it so that's the whole point get it out there let other people enjoy it uh, I was also told that there is a other supplement that follows up on some possible strings for 
what happened to the, the Wabis after the uh, culmination of their being supposedly wiped out. Uh, and I am going to try to find a copy of that and, and uh, get it downloaded. Somebody says we already I already have it in the uh, thumb drive library that was sent to me a couple months ago. It's just a matter of uh, finding, uh, finding it and downloading it and printing it out. Anyway, I'm Rick. Little Missy's sitting over there. She's actually taking a nap. Listen to me uh, ramble on. Hope you guys have yourself a great weekend and, uh, you know, keep your shit locked and loaded. Just saying. <laughs>